Welcome everybody. Our group is interested in how adult brain function and behaviors are influenced by neural network formation during development. Our behavior is, in part but not all, influenced by genetic factors. Some genetic factors working in early development may possibly affect postnatal brain maturation, such as synaptic pruning and maturation of dopaminergic projection. Alternately, other genetic factors may have direct impact on postnatal brain maturation. In this study, we demonstrate how a selective disturbance in early development may affect postnatal brain maturation, which in turn result in the aberrant behaviors in adult food. Here we use in utero gene transfer to address this question. Dr. Atsushi Kamiya, a leading author of this study, will explain more. Utero gene transfer is a technique to modulate expression of a target gene, mainly used to study histological analysis of corticogenesis. DNA solution was injected into the either side of lateral ventricles of brains at embryonic 14 days and introduced into the cell in the ventricular zone by electroporation. This process was repeated for another side. The uterus was exposed by laparotomy. DNA solution was injected into lateral ventricle of embryonic brain and electroporated. The uterus was placed back into the abdominal cavity and the abdominal wall was sutured. The animal was allowed to continue with the development of her embryos. For selective gene targeting in prefrontal cortex depending on which hemisphere was injected, the electrodes were roughly oriented at a 30 degree angle downward from an imaginary line from the olfactory bulbs to the caudal side of the cortical hemisphere and at 20 degrees outward angle from the midline. In this paper, by using this technique, we knock down expression of a gene, DISC1, during prenatal and perinatal period in the pyramidal neurons of the prefrontal cortex. Then, what happens? At postnatal day 14, we observed disturbance of dendritic alvarization in the pyramidal neurons. Nonetheless, two weeks after, at postnatal day 28, no change in the levels of dopamine in the frontal cortex was observed. Very interestingly, robust manifestation of this dopamine defect appears only after the puberty, postnatal day 56. Then, what is its impact on the behavior? Let's show one example of prepulse inhibition, the paradigm that reflects information processing or sensory motor gating. Again, in mice with this one knockdown, we did not observe change of prepulse inhibition at postnatal day 28, but observed much more robust change at postnatal day 56. Summary We propose the feasibility of using in utero gene transfer to study the influence of neurodevelopment on adult brain function and behavior. The advantage of this technique is that we can modulate expression of multiple genes. Mental illnesses such as schizophrenia is caused by multiple genetic factors. Therefore, this technique may be useful in building the animal model for mental illnesses. If you are interested in more detail, please read our article. Thank you very much and have a nice day. All experiments were performed in accordance with Johns Hopkins University Animal Care and Youth Committee guidelines.